Several years now, you guys have been hearing me talk about um, the TIs. It's an acronym used um, describing targeted individuals. And if you go back in history and you do some deep research, you realize that targeted individuals, um, the community right now that has come together to share the information about how they have been victimized as subjects in a laboratory experiment for decades now, uh, dating back to the 40s and 50s, uh, easily uh, documented. Uh, if you do your research, you find out that uh, a lot of people have been experimented with, uh, people of all walks of life. Uh, I have with me right now a gentleman uh, that I've come to admire for his research abilities. Uh, his name is Jeff Murray. He is uh, what he is describing, and I agree with it, an innocent targeted individual because he has been targeted uh, randomly, not for any probable cause or anything like that, but just for the same purposes that they've been experimenting with targeted individuals uh, for many, many decades now. They use these human specimens. They apply uh, technological uh, experimentation to see what the impact is on the human mind and the human body. Uh, and uh, Jeff Murray joins me. And as I said, Jeff Murray, I consider you to be a great researcher who converts these conspiracy theories into conspiracy facts. There's a lot of information out there, out in the open. Uh, and as uh, Kenny, GMN Ken always says, you know, just Google up anything that we ever talk about and see what you find. The information is right before us, isn't it, Jeff? Uh, yes, it is. And thanks for having me on, Pete. Oh, th thank you for thank you for joining me. This is the first opportunity I've had to, um, uh, to speak directly with you. Uh, you have... Uh, not necessarily sheltered yourself, but I would say minimized uh, the risk associated with the people that come at you and target you and, and do so technologically, physiologically. Uh, there's so many different aspects of, uh, of what a, a targeted individual is subjected to. Uh, Jeff, t tell me this. Uh, when did you realize that you were being targeted? How long ago? It was... Um about 2006, 2007, it, and it started off, I was a sales manager for a company in New Hampshire, and I just noticed it started off very gradually. And I just noticed that the uh, local police were found, seemed to be paying too much attention to me. And I said, I'm not doing anything wrong. And it had just expanded on a week-to-week, month-to-month basis from there. Hmm. Um, you know, you know when when you first study. when you first realize that the police are targeting you, uh, you, you think that mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe they have you know firsthand knowledge that uh, you've done something wrong or they have probable cause to do that. But as you do more research, in most cases, what I'm also discovering is the, that most members of our law enforcement community don't even know why they're dispatched uh, to go target and harass individuals. They just know that they have a subject of their targeting, uh, and they don't know the exact details. They don't know about your life. They don't know about the technology uh, that they're even employing. They have access to this technology. But isn't it true that in most cases, uh, based on your research, that law enforcement isn't even aware of what they're employing? I would agree with that. And I had the opportunity because I grew up with a friend of mine who became a master sergeant with the state police, and I knew him through grade school, junior high, high school, we played, played a lot of sports together. And I actually tutored him in math and some things. So, you know, we had been down some roads together. And I called him up at his, right at the police station. He took the phone call on his cell phone. He had me call back on another number. And I told him what was happening with, with not only with the organized stalking, not just the police, but citizens, and then electronic painful electronic frequencies. And he, he said, 
I knew he wouldn't lie to me because I knew him too well. And he said, Jeff, all I can tell you is it's a federal program. Hmm. That's all I can tell you. And that was pretty much what he said to me. So he was aware of it then. Retired. Okay. Yeah. 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 I got it. I, I really, you know, I jumped on all my resources, Pete, and he was one of the first ones I thought of because I said, Hey, he'll know what's going on. I mean, come on, he's a master sergeant. Uh, and, and he basically said, you know, I was, I really hammered him as far as, you know, because you can do that when you know people for so long. Sure. And, uh, and, uh, he, he basically said, Jeff, all I can tell you is it's a federal program. And, and, uh, and that was pretty much it. Uh, he didn't say much more than that, but he's, he's retired now. So, so we do know that at the, you know, at the top end of the chain of command that, um, you know, that they give their, their marching orders to the underlings that aren't fully aware of exactly what they're doing. Uh, they just know it, it's kind of like, you know, when, uh, when these police officers, you know, suit up and mount up and they're, they're MRAPs and they go to serve a search warrant. Uh, they, you know, they receive a little ticket in the morning saying, this is who we're serving a, you know, it's a high risk warrant, uh, but they don't know the individual that they're going to bust their front door down. Uh, they don't know the exact circumstances of the warrant. They just think that they're being constitutional and lawful in serving in serving that warrant. But obviously the people that are issuing those warrants and, 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 and in some cases, fabricating the justification for the police to go in uh people like your friend as a master sergeant are aware that this stuff exists now let me ask you this when he says that it's a federal program based on your research um what justification does the federal government have uh, to employ this technology we'll talk about the specifics of the technology but what what justification does the federal government have to employ this this technology upon the american public I think after 2001, according to Steve German, who is an FBI anti-terrorism expert and officer, he said that policing transitioned from probable cause-based policing to intelligence-based policing in a return of red squads in a program called COINTELPRO, which never really ended. That's the counterintelligence program. So I think national security, quote unquote, national security uh, would be uh, the justification, and in my opinion, it's a manufactured war on terror. It's fabricated, in my opinion. My research has shown me that uh, Al-Qaeda is nothing more than the Mujahideen, which was our mercenary, our mercenary army in uh, Afghanistan during the 80s to fight the Soviets so that they wouldn't get the $12 trillion with the oil and natural gas there in the Caspian Sea basis. Basin. So I think that uh, Steve German pointing out red squads, which was once prevalent in the country, and COINTELPRO, mm -hmm. counterintelligence program. I learned a lot from Ted Gunderson, the former FBI chief. Yes, sir. And he, he, made it, he made it clear that it never ended. And he said, in fact, it's a lot worse. And, and it's a lot worse now. And, and you can be targeted for no criminal reason. The, the, it's self-issued. For instance, a national security letter, it can be filed and self-issued with no grand jury hearing or whatever. So it's all under the guise of uh, national security. You know, there one seems to be. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, what, one thing I noticed in my research as well, like looking looking back uh, when these um, these experiments were started by the CIA. Uh, looking at FOIA documents. These are Freedom of Information Act uh, requests that after a certain period of time, uh, information is declassified. I noticed that the CIA um, didn't have access to the technology they do now. So back then they had to have personal interaction with their subjects or their targets, and they would actually have to sit you down and inflict uh, trauma-based um, uh, interrogation trauma-based mind control. They experimented with the human body and they, they said, okay, let's inflict trauma on this individual and see if we can get their personality to, uh, to, to just hide and then insert our, our other personalities that we want that we can activate at a future date. Back then, they had to do that physically. Uh, do, would you agree with me? This is what I've noticed. that When we refer to the technology, 
that the technology now allows them to inflict this trauma remotely, that, that they can use technology through the Internet, through you know, wireless uh, means. Now they can actually inflict trauma remotely. Isn't that true? It is true. It's yeah. 100% true. Yeah. I've been through a lot of nights that I, it's really, it can be very, very brutal. Very, very brutal. Yeah, Jeff, let's talk about specifics and let's give our listening audience that isn't aware of what I just said, okay? Uh, some of the realities. Mm -hmm. Inflicting um, mm -hmm. uh, trauma upon a subject. I, I'm, I'm just going to come up with some, uh, this is what I've seen, that this technology exists. I know that in the cell, fo cell phone towers, for instance, there are specific frequencies in 900 megahertz range that they can communicate mm -hmm. to our households on the 900 megahertz, I think it's 902 or something like that, and communicate through your smart meters to your home if they wanted to target your home. Your home is actually filled or surrounded with copper wire. Uh, can they not um, send a signal uh, through the cell phone towers, through smart meters, if they wanted to target your home uh, and find you where you are in your house and, and actually inflict pain upon you? Can they do that? Absolutely. There's yeah. there's technology called a multifunctional radio frequency directed energy system that is mounted to uh, cell towers and uh, was patented uh, by I believe Raytheon. I Raytheon. Patented by Raytheon. Very painful frequencies are very painful. They can be either minimal. They can be moderate. They can be Heavy and very painful, and not recent. Well, a couple of years ago, I had an, I had continuous twelve days of continuous high intensity pain, where I couldn't get away from it in anywhere anywhere possible. And I used to read about how personalities were split, mm -hmm. and I, this experience of those twelve days, I don't believe they split into another personality, but I but I found how you can crawl into your inside your brain into a place to escape it. And I emailed Dr. Robert Duncan and I told him I was going to a place in my mind to get away from the pain in the midst of the pain. Mm -hmm. And he said, don't do that. Go back into the pain. Otherwise, we'll reprogram the split. And I did that. I went back into the pain. But I'm telling you, that is, it's not easy. It, uh, it was brutal. I was I was pretty much yelling at the top of my lungs. Wow! And then you know, it preceded it preceded the I had a court date because I had to go to court at the end of those twelve days. It was only about a speeding ticket. And, no, and someone said in North Carolina, if you go to the court for your speeding ticket, they'll reduce it. The judge was great. He took me like third because I was so I was so minimal over, and he reduced it to five over and he said, go see the prosecutor and you won't even be on your insurance. And I was, it was just while I was traveling on business and uh, it happened exactly like he said. And I said to myself after I left the court, I said, you know what? Those 12 days of intense hammering of microwaves preceded this and then it was over. They took it off. Now, Jeff, stay right there. We're going we're gonna to take a short break and come back and uh, talk about your own personal experiences. And um, you know what? I, I think you're well aware of the fact that it's not just being done to you, that the TI community as a whole, as I mentioned in the opening segment, uh, the TI community... Uh, have been subjects of a laboratory experiment, uh, whether it be one-on-one -on -one between a CIA interrogator or programmer uh, and an individual sitting in a seat uh, um, being in, uh, uh, subjected to this trauma. Uh, now they are ready to take this thing full board to the American public. We'll be right back. Jeff Murray, and the reason why, let me tell you the reason why I'm with Jeff Murray. Uh, 
Even as uh, he is a self-described innocent targeted individual. He's been targeted, as I mentioned. Uh, uh, these TIs are randomly selected and have been for decades. Biological, um, technological uh, subjects of this laboratory experiment. Some of these people, they come from, uh, TIs come from all walks of life. Uh, you could be uh, of any race, creed, color. It doesn't matter. Uh, ph physiologically, they need to test the technology on uh, different shapes of people, uh, physically fit people, uh, less physically fit people. But ultimately, it was for the purposes early on in the 40s and we'll say the 40s and 50s. Uh, that's the line of demarcation for me when they really started to step it up with the use of uh, not just uh, physical trauma based mind control. Uh, they also use psychotropic drugs and things like that uh, to change your physiology. But ultimately, understand this concept. It's to inflict trauma, um, either physical trauma or in the cases of women, they use sexual trauma. For what reasons? Well, if they can get your, your soul, your personality um, to just re reach that point of overload, um, your personality shuts down. If you, you as an individual remember any time maybe you broke a bone and you received so much pain that it, that it reaches the point to where it becomes numbing and and your your brain says this is just too much for me to handle and you find i'm going to refer to it as that that happy place where you're no longer feeling that pl that pain and um uh and it suppresses your soul and your personality at that moment that's where they have discovered that your personality can be split and they can insert uh a specific personality uh, e even through hypnosis to be reactivated at a future date and time. Now, not only uh, do they do that physically, they actually have written in the CIA documentation uh, that they can reactivate that personality in writing or pick up the phone and call you and use specific terminal terminology to reactivate you. Now, uh, this, this sounds fanciful. This sounds like a conspiracy theory. Uh, but Jeff Murray is with me because, as I said, he's one of the best deep researchers that has been able to to take these conspiracy theories and factualize it. The information is out there, Jeff, for us all to find out. What I just described to the American public is factually correct, isn't it? It is. Yep. It really is. Yeah. And the information is, 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 is there. We're learning about this because... You know, through our Freedom of Information Act requests and all the research that's been done, we talk about COINTELPRO. I remember when I first got into alternative media uh, that COINTELPRO was a conspiracy theory. Uh, Ted Gunderson, former high-level FBI uh, supervisor and agent in the Los Angeles area, said that back then when he was employing this, this it wasn't technology, it was techniques of harassment, uh, covert harassment. Uh, either in writing, they would send letters to people. Um, they would they would do uh, uh, a covert surveillance of individuals and then use information against them to get to cause them to break down. But it's ultimately uh, to perpetrate covert harassment upon them so that you can control your subject. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it all goes together. They typically will run the COINTELPRO with the. Uh, as Dr. As you had on your show, Dr. Robert Duncan said, with the MK Ultra, uh, which never really ended, they put it under the research and development section of the CIA after the Church Commission hearings in 1975. So, um, unfortunately, for American unwitting American public who thought it all came to an end, you know, they target people, and then as soon as anybody tries to complain or, you know, really reach out for help, they cut off all your avenues there and neutralize you by simple term of being, you know, oh, you're crazy. Thankfully, you have people like you, people, people who, and, and you and like Robert Duncan, who have confirmed, and Dr. Fred Bell, who have confirmed that this technology has now been at a place where they don't need to bring you into a lab in order to do the uh, mind control um, procedure uh, experimentation right. and, and implement it. They can do it where you live with frequencies. Right. So, 
Now, now what That's technologies, let, let's give an example of what technologies are being employed. Um, and, and if you don't mind, we can go down the list. It's a huge list, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Picture this, uh, Dr. Nick Begich. When I was talking to him about harp technology, I was referencing weather modification. He said, no, 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 no. Don't worry about harp's weather modification capabilities. He said harp is more dangerous with respect to mind control, that harp technology is being used, satellite technology is being, being used, that, that oh. cell phone technology is being used, that we are literally, our society, when I say, uh, and, and I want you to take it from there, when I say that now that they've experimented and mastered uh, these, these procedures for manipulating our personalities and, 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 and getting to suppress, uh, getting our souls to suppress and hide, uh, that we are completely and totally immersed. It's a multifaceted system, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Barry Trower, I watched a lot of his interviews, and it's kind of, in a way, humorous. He, he, in one of them, he says they were going, you know, there was a debate amongst targeted people in this country how it was being done, satellite, cell power, handheld. And Barry Trower nails it when he says they can they can use pretty much anything. And, uh, you know, there is, that sounds far fetched, but you know what? Not that far fetched. Um, he, he's a microwave weapons expert, as you know, and they can use cell power system. Absolutely. And that's a primary one of them. And they can use satellite and Dr. Fred Bell, which I bought his book and I talked, you know, by email back when he was alive, not that long ago. And he said, you know, we were, I was going through all this. I thought they had to have a chip in you. Robert Duncan said they didn't have to have a chip in you. John Hall said they didn't have a chip in you. Uh, you know, so I'm saying, how do they do this? And what they do is they can laser record your electronic signature off of your brain, off of your head, which everybody's is different. They laser record it. They have to have you in one spot and they upload it to what's called a keyhole satellite. That's an optical satellite. And, it, it, and with that, a functional MRI can be done on this target lifetime, mm. in real time. Right. So, and, it, and if anyone, let me, let me add something to this in steak and potatoes language. Um, if you think that this is too far fetched um, and, and you say that that, that can't be done uh, to specific individuals, then you need to think about this. Uh, how many two individuals have the same exact thoughts at any given moment. We give off uh, very specific because we are uh, uh, frequency beings. We, we have an electronic signature and it's very, very specific and unique to e each of our souls. So each of us is so individualized that if they can figure out what frequency we are communicating and transmitting, um, uh, that if they can do that, then they can pinpoint and communicate two ways, right? We're sending out signals upward to, let's say to a satellite or, or through radio waves, uh, we're sending out signals from our, from our bodies. We are, uh, they've been able to analyze those. Now they've mastered the technology so they can, they can communicate back to us. Can't they? Absolutely. Um, I, when Ken Rhodes had Deb, uh, Deborah go to England to interview Barry Trow, he, he gave her a list of frequencies electromagnetic pulse frequencies in, in the expected physiological outcome on a human that you can expect. And if you don't have the list, I can get you that list. And you can see that anger, panic behavior, all these different things can be implemented into the tar subject, target, whatever you want to call, and, and it elicit a certain response. Mm. They know what it's going to do. For instance, the Tetra devices that the police carry on their chest, special forces wear as the headset on their head, elicits a 17.5 gigahertz frequency, electromagnetic pulse frequency, which is a weaponized frequency. Mm. And, and according to microwave weapons expert Barry Trower, he travels all over the world. Uh, he said that police aggressiveness has been a problem since the Tetra, it's an experiment until 2018. Tetra is, I don't, you know, it's an acronym, T-E-T-R-A, 
is an experiment in both 2018 and, and the experiment is utilizing a, a weaponized frequency which not only causes cancer but also elicits aggressive behavior. Mm. And that is both the first Tetra report. He wrote reports for the World Health Organization and he told them right flat out these frequencies, number one, are, are dangerous. Number two, you're not shielding these devices. So now, not only are targeted individuals subject of experimentation and brutal, brutal trauma-based experimentation, but even law enforcement and other people wearing these Tetra devices, you know, EMP people, are also subject to frequencies. Mm. Um, so. now- isn't it also true that if they wanted to uh, neutralize a subject or a target, uh, that they that, that that these frequencies not only cause uh, cancer, but they can actually inflict cancer? If they wanted to shut you down and just make it seem like uh, they're terminating their subject um, uh, based on natural causes, that they can inflict uh, certain frequencies upon a subject and cause them to get cancer and just die naturally w- without any, yeah, I, w- I would call it uh, plausible deniability. They say, well, he just died of natural causes. A subject like, for instance, someone who knew that this technology was being used upon them, Ted Gunderson, uh, w- died of cancer. Uh, and he knew that the technology was used uh, against him himself. And he admitted that before he died. Is Is that true that they can give people cancer if they want to? I believe so. I be- I absolutely believe so. I, I believe that the frequencies alone, even if they're not targeting you, that the that according to and he's an expert, uh, according to Trower, that the uh, the World Health Organization came out and said that in 2010, you buy your Verizon whatever cell phone you want. I don't want to pick out Verizon, whatever cell phone. It'll say in the documentation and on and I read it. In 2010, the World Health Organization came out and said that frequencies are safe, blah, blah, blah. But if you pull up 2011, the same organization, World Health Organization, came out and said cell phones may cause cancer. (laughs) And and Trower pointed out that in order to make the cancer tumor, brain tumor numbers not stand out as much, they recategorized all thousands of endocrine type diseases, uh, uh, intercrendricant diseases from cancer tumors. They just recategorized it. So they're not shielded. You're getting frequencies not only from cell phones and whatnot, but you're getting frequencies like uh, Beckett pointed out from the transmitters, HARP, of which HARP is one of probably a dozen big transmitters. And and they're using, believe it or not, those, those things you see up in the sky our, our aluminum and barium, you know, the, these chemtrails are being used in, in conjunction with the large transmitters. They're Wellsback materials, W-E-L-S-B-A-C-H, Wellsback. They're used for geoengineering. Mm-hmm. They're used for satellite surveillance. Mm-hmm. And you can simply transmit and beam those with, with electromagnetic pulse and mind control is definitely a part of the function of a large transmitter like HARP. Um, so if you're targeted, um, you're going to be on the receiving end of a, 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 a lot of pain. Uh, they neutralize you with pain. You always feel sick. You, you wake up every day like you got hit in the head with a bat. I mean, and, and it's the frequencies uh, going going into your body going into your head Mm -hmm. they can cause cancer absolutely yeah yeah now now let me let me say this that uh, that they've used the um under the guise of um you know national security and fighting terrorism they always use that excuse in order to advance the technology and the use of the technology covertly secretly a part of this immersive um uh process that they put our human subjects under uh technologically is also the gang stalking aspects. They use other human beings as part of that immersive uh, program to to create this reality around an individual to almost drive them to a level of insanity. You've got people that are impacting your life 
uh, as these frequencies are being employed? Um, are they not using human, um, not subjects, but human, uh, they've weaponized humans almost uh, to employ gang stalking techniques and uh, even online. Uh, they're, they're using, you know, uh, fake accounts and stuff like that to create um, a false reality that causes a person, uh, a specific targeted individual to do what they want to do as far as control and manipulation. Is that true? Yes, that is absolutely true. Before the microwaves even started on me, um, the tactics include character assassination within your community, provocation. In other words, it's going to provoke you to lash out by doing uh, running cars in front of you. Uh, when you're walking on the street, running cars at you, doing bicycles, uh, with, the, with the hopes that you lash out so that they can arrest you. Okay, that's that's what I confirmed, even from people that uh, a prosecutor told me that. He had been retired, but he was an, a really nice guy, and he told me that that's what they try to do is provoke you. Character assassination. Yep. Uh, that use... Uh, that's going to lead us into our next segment. This is what I want to talk about when we come back into the next segment is, you know, how does a TI uh, recognizing that the stuff is being employed against them? How do they speak out about it? Uh, they can't go to law enforcement. They can't go to the medical community. There are no resources because even those people aren't trained. You're listening to the East Antilles Show. I am the all right now when i say and gm and kenny says that he's actually coined the phrase google it up and see what you find because the information is out there everything that we are speaking of is so well documented uh most people uh, in our society today, because they have the attention span of a of a gnat, we, we already know that. We've already been programmed and conditioned, uh, almost genetically conditioned. Now we've got multiple generations that are, you know, they, they think in, you know, 140 character increments on Twitter. Um, they, they, they think in uh, very short spans. Uh, they don't have the patience to go in and take a look at the documentation. The person I have with me, Jeff Murray, has done all of this research. He understands what is happening to him. He's helping uh, improve the world that we live in by sharing that information. Being aware of this thing is the most important defense that we have against it. Because when you're aware of it, you can resist it. But uh, when somebody is not fully aware of who's using this technology against them, and you think and you trust that the system that we live in, uh, you thought we were living in a constitutional republic. In fact, we're not. If you pick up the phone, and you call a law enforcement uh, professional or a medical professional, uh, that entire program that they have you under, that it led to that point to where you want to pick up and, and lash out, uh, they have actually set up and staged the event where they can actually remove you from society. Law enforcement hears a call from a TI that says, oh, my goodness, they're uh, using smart meter, you know, frequencies in my house. And, and I've got these burn marks on my feet and I'm going absolutely crazy. And in fact, they say, yes, uh, you sound very, very crazy. This is so far fetched. And a law enforcement official not knowing about this, not being aware of it, has no clue what to do other than the very specific pr procedure of keeping you safe from your own self and taking you off the street and incarcerating you. They can actually pull you off the street, Jeff Murray, and, 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 and put you in a, in a mental ward just for stating the realities that we're talking about, uh, can't they? Yeah, they can. Uh, there's, there's no winning as far as you're not going to convince anybody, and even if you do, you're not, there's nothing they can do anyway. I, I like to, instead of me saying this is going on, I like to take, and thankfully, we have some experts like Dr. Robert Duncan, uh, Barry Trower, Dr. Fred Bell, uh, Dr. John Hall, and Pitt Gunderson, and even Steve German. He knew that the ground game, I call it the ground game. Uh, so there are experts, there are law enforcement, there are CIA scientists, there are NASA scientists. And I say, hey, I'm not saying it, they're saying it. And, and Dr. Robert Duncan even wrote a no-touch torture report, which the, the torture that target individuals are undergoing parallels 
the torture that was done to Guantanamo Bay subjects, and he posted it online. Anybody and their brother can bring it up in two seconds. It's called the uh, No Touch Torture Report, Dr. Robert Duncan. So since he's also interviewed a few times, as you interviewed him, he yes. did a good job. And he, there you go. We got a former CIA scientist. There's, there's a credible person. And prior to him, it was Dr. Fred Bell, who was very credible. So I, instead of going out and saying, hey, I'm telling you, this has happened to me. I'm telling you that these scientists are saying it's happening to Americans, mm-hmm. which is a whole different ballgame. You know, so I even, I, I even let the world know that that's going on as much as I can based on the testimony of experts who, who really have put themselves at risk by yeah. coming out and saying that, as we could see what happened with Fred, Dr. Fred Bell. Jeff, Jeff, let's, let's make this really clear. I know you can do this. You already know the information is out there. You're sharing it with as many people as possible. Obviously, uh, you have been able to endure uh, long-term, long-term torture. Uh, but Jeff, t- tell our listening audience that, that this, this message that we're communicating to everybody is not advocating for a small, you know, select group, minority individuals who are t- TIs or targeted individuals. We're saying that these individuals have been experimented with, that the technology has been mastered, and every single person hearing our voice right now is a potential target under their control, uh, their mind control, and, and technological enslavement system. Isn't everyone right now a potential targeted victim under this control and technological enslavement system? Yes. They're scaling this to the entire population. Um, as you know, um, Byron May was a district attorney. I mean, there you go. I mean, once upon a time, if you were to go back when Julian McKinney did the first report back in 1992, I believe it was, it was mainly a small segment of people, and mainly they focused on poor people and uh, minority people. Uh, now, there's Nobody's off limits. So they're scaling this to the entire population, including a district attorney. So uh, amongst other people, I'm sure they have senators and congressmen and beyond that are being, well, I know Dr. Uh, Susan Arrigo was a two-star general, and she was targeted with directed energy weapons, and she was the guru of remote viewing. Remote viewing was replaced by remote neural monitoring because remote neural monitoring is 100%. Remote viewing is like 70, 75% because it uses psychic ability. Mm-hmm. Uh, her program was, she was the guru of remote viewing. She was a two star general. And during the 2000s, she met in the Pentagon with the four star generals. Wow. And she got targeted and she endured torture. And it's all her, all like the reason I know all that is because it's, she posted it up online. I read it. Mm. And um, so she's targeted. So there you go. One of their own. But basically one of their own, right in the Pentagon. So, and, so uh, they, do, would you say that uh, generally, well, it, let, let's talk about, you know, from subtle mind control techniques, we'll say the mainstream media and the brainwashing that exists through the, through the media, whether it be film, uh, whether it be television, whether it be, you know, news and stuff like that. Those are very subtle forms of mind control. Um, can, can we also talk a little bit about anything that you know about with respect to screen flicker technology through our computers and through our smartphones? Is there the means to, uh, to program, to brainwash and do so subliminally through our computers and through our smartphones? Do they have that ability to do that? Yes, I, I believe so. Mm-hmm. I, I've read some on that. It hasn't been a focus of my the research that I do because I've got bigger problems, priorities, but right. I did get into that somewhat, and flicker rates are being used, absolutely. Yeah, uh, and, and it's patented. You, yeah, it's patented, isn't it? The screen flicker patents... Oh. And the, the, the patents yep. and how they're written, and I'm sure you've seen this before. We've, we've glossed over this stuff. I have. 
Uh, they have the ability. The patent was written. And by the way, when a patent is written, it's not an idea. It's actually something they've been able to demonstrate. They patented screen flicker technology to give them to the ability to communicate with our subconscious mind by bypassing our eyes and our ears. So this screen flicker allows them through our computer screens to talk to our subconscious uh, without our eyes and ears knowing it. That's how the patent was written. Mm -hmm. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? That, I mean, most people are thinking about what we're saying here, and they're like, oh, well, that's only happening to the TIs. Well, picture how many people they have the ability to communicate with. Everyone with access to a computer or a smartphone, they can talk to their subconscious right now. This is a hard, cold fact. Absolutely. In yeah. fact, I, think, I believe the Operation Paperclip scientists that were brought over to this country mm -hmm. from um, Germany after mm -hmm. World War II. So they weren't working on projects that were the benefit of Americans. Right. And, you know, so mind control was one of them. Now, mind control was a big program over there. Now, the application, just for us regular steak and potatoes, you know, uh, average uh, listener, you know, just think they could develop a way uh, to communicate with us, to give us confidence in our government, in our economy, and keep us on the rat wheel making purchases. So it could be subtle messaging that they're sending out to everybody in order to keep the economy sustained by doing that, by manipulating the human minds within the United States, if they want to do that, or throughout the world, for that matter. That's one method. Now, another method uh, is to create um, a, we call them Manchurian candidates, um, an individual that can be reprogrammed to be activated to do whatever it is that they want. I'm going to use the names, you know, Myron May um, and Aaron Alexis. If they want someone to go out uh, to kill and shoot people, they can actually pre-program individuals to do that and get them pre-programmed subliminally, can't they? And remotely. Yep. I think there's two, two little, according to Duncan, they call those psycho bombs. They, tr they torture them to the point where then they go, they convince them that they know who's doing this to them. And then they do this, this shooting, mass shooting. And there's also super soldiers, another category that would be more of an asset, which has been portrayed in the movies, of course, with the born. But this is also, there are also real super soldiers, microchips and frequencies and communication with biocommunications. This is right. This is the type of uh, application of those technologies that they'd want to use. And the super soldiers were used in Vietnam and, and before. So Duncan O'Finian and some of these people are people that were well aware of that. And of course, they're going to use their advanced technologies with the new ones. And, uh, and, and, I, and I believe they've done so from what I've read. And uh, they're also going to build into super soldiers now like super strength, super running capabilities with some of the, you know, transhumanistic capabilities that they have. But, um, yeah, you know what, like let me, Obama. let me give an example of that, by the way, um, being that, uh, and, and the mastering of this technology, this two way communication with an individual, uh, if they have the ability, uh, in two way communication to activate, uh, certain chemical, um, uh, functions within your body if they wanted to um, instigate or activate your adrenaline to make you superhuman. Uh, they have the ability to do that remotely, don't they? Oh, yeah. And the, oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's, that physiological, it's, it's not, that physiological remote control, they have that ability to do that. Uh, they've mastered that, yeah, haven't they? You, yes, and, they're in, and it's not staying in the same place. They're advancing, always advancing, but you can use your they can they can use your eyes as a surveillance device oh, to a certain goodness. degree now to be improved, which is being improved. So uh, I think they're gonna get to the point where in my opinion, based on what I read, and it's kinda out there, it's nothing that isn't out there. They get to the point where they re replace the human with, with a robotic uh, type of uh, super soldier. So that no orders can ever be refused and complete control. I mean, that's not that far off. There's a company called uh, 
the robotic company in uh, Waltham, Massachusetts that Google recently bought. And they got all sorts of human looking type robots mm. uh, that are uh, being worked on yeah. with artificial intelligence and with a, a human human microchip for the brain. Mm. So, so they had Magnus Olsen on there. Yeah. And it's all interrelated. He does a great job of explaining the interrelationship between nano nano chips and artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and frequencies and synthetic telepathy. It can it can all be brought together to make it to make a, a weapon. Yes. Now they um um a great segment, Jeff Murray. And this isn't going to be the last time that you guys hear from Jeff Murray. I want to pull him in a little bit closer because he is um, hes so determined to expose this, to make us aware of what their capabilities are. Now, the techniques that they use, of course, uh, to quash and silence those that are talking out about this stuff is, let's, let's say, the old CIA technique of calling somebody a conspiracy theorist. Uh, that's no longer going to work because we the people are rising up, we're awakening. We're gonna